Uh, good morning to Ms. Mazura and our classmates uh, and my groupmates. Uh, I will, our, our topic here to present is Agenda Setting 30. So before we go into the presentation for the topic, I will introduce my groupmates, Kang Siyoon, Ting Yong Jin, Rekha, and Mi Arisha. I'll introduce you briefly to the theory, and then later my groupmates will introduce you to the rest of the topic, the case theory, and uh, yeah, the link of it to the, our main theory. So what is agenda setting theory? Basically, agenda setting theory is when the media creates concern and awareness over a certain topic to, to of course, the media outlets. So why is this a problem? So if we think about it, it actually, but it actually is that if a news item frequently, the audience will regard that issue as important. So basically, they make you, the more you see it, the more you remember it, and the more you'll talk about it. So a little bit about the history and information. During the 1930s, there was, um, there was no such thing as the agenda setting theory. Um, so people thought that whatever the media told was accepted fully by the audience. But during the, after the 1968 presidential elections, and Combs and Shaw, they introduced uh, the theory and they told the people that it was not actually true. So at the same time, the framing theory was also introduced. Um, framing is when they use misleading headlines, journalists use misleading headlines to uh, create public attention. This is, this might seem like something they do for like, place or like for more money, but that's not, which is actually true, but, um, which is actually true, but the thing is that they hack your cognitive processes, it has a psychological effect and it adds to the agenda theory. Uh, basically, they, they try and manipulate your brains. The most important thing is to always be aware that what you read in the news is not what it actually is, apart from the facts. The news comes to you being controlled by someone else, for example, a policymaker. Uh, people who act as opinion leaders for the media are called the policymakers, and they're usually people who, um, like politicians or someone with a lot of money. So Rekha will now introduce you uh, to the effects that the story has on the general public. I will talk about the strength and the weaknesses of media agenda theory. The strength of the media agenda, which is setting into the claim that it has predictive power due to the fact that it ends speed that is it of them thinking alike of issues and having <coughs> same opinion about the certain issues. Again, it has an organizing power which where most people see the same issues as the important ones. And <coughs> it also helps arrange the already known knowledge through the media facts. Moreover, it has an explanatory power which explains the most people why most people go for the particular piece of information. Next is the weakness of the media agenda, which includes the fact that media users may not be as ideal as the theory assumes. People may not be well informed, deeply engaged in public affairs, thoughtful and skeptical. Instead, they may pay only casual attention to public affairs and, and sometimes be ignorant to the other details. For people who have made their minds, the effect is weaker. Now media cannot create or conceal problems. They may only they may only alter the awareness, priorities, and salience where people attach to a set of problems. There are also researchers as legally as legally being inclusive in establishing a casual relationship between audience and the and the media coverage. There are also possible. There are also two possible effects, which is negative effect and positive effects. Negative effect, which is negative media influence, is often connected to violence in the media. Positive effects, positive media influence campaign aims to correct negative behaviors. They focus on altering the perception of the 
target audience. Media effect theory is how media can affect society and how society is affected by the media. A theory that tends to see the audience as passive and sees the ex exposure to a to particular aspects of media that may that may that can influence the audience behavior um, by reading or viewing it. Okay, this is our case study of a genocide. Our topic is about North Korea. After World War II, Korea has been separated into two regions, which is South Korea and North Korea. Both seemed independent, but South Korea was under control of the US, and North Korea was controlled by Soviets. As Soviets used Kim Il-sung as their puppet in, their, in, North, in North Korea to control the country, they made him as a leader to lead the country and also and also they started to promote and portray him as a national hero. Next I would like to pass it to my friend Chin Yong Jin to continue the history of Korea. Okay, so I will continue the history of North Korea before we go into the case study, the agenda setting in the media. So as she said the, North, uh, the Kim Il-sung has become the leader of North Korea. Then he formed the North Korean Federation of Literature and Art to control the cultural output within the North Korea. Then he also used art and media to portray himself as a godlike figure to the citizens, like this poster. There are many similar posters as this can be seen inside the North Korea everywhere. All the people are look up to him, and he is the god, he is the leader for the people. He then fostered a cult of personality, and he formed the Democratic People Republic of Korea, DPRK, aka the government of North Korea. Then, Kim Il-sung, he wanted to reunify the North and the South of Korea, so he decided to invade the South Korea in the June of 1950. However, his initi initiations of uh, bringing, starting the Korean War is not achieved. As we can see now today, we still have South Korea and North Korea. But this Korean War, he caused, uh, this Korean War caused a lot of millions of deaths um, for both countries, for both military and also the, civil, uh, civil, the citizens. So the both Koreans decided to sign a ceasefire agreement in 1953. However, the actual peaceful treaty is not signed. So until nowadays, the two Koreas, their relationship are still very, uh, they still have a lot of tension between the two Korea. And the reason why US has become the North Korean enemy as well, because remember, uh, uh, Rika said, the South Korea is being controlled by the US. So when the North Korea decided to fight with the South Korea, they also fighting with the US, the United States. Back, ten, back to the time when there's no internet, the North Koreans are not allowed to travel outside of their own countries. They have limited accessible news channels. The only source that can uh, to get the information is from their state-run media. And the state-run media is being controlled by the DPRK. So this is how the North Koreans are being isolated from the outside world. The agenda setting in the state ground media. The example we have is radio and TV sets. All these are pre-tuned to government stations. For the radio, they must be checked and registered with the police. One of the stations is uh, broadcast about the soldiers on the border with the South Korea. And then for the TV stations, they have this Korean Center Television. This channel, they always broadcast the programs or documentaries of the leader, the king, to visit the industrial, agricultural, military sites. And the leader always to show personally guided the workers and servicemen. And it is essential for the TV channel to report the authoritative statements from the government and military. This is how
how they are using the state, uh, their state-run media to always frequently show the hard work of their servicemen, what the leaders doing to their countries. It's always benefits to them. And then another example is newspaper. It's called Rodo Shimun. According to the reporter of United Press Internationals, the reporter name is Shin. So this reporter say that Rodo Shimun say that U.S. holds ulterior motive for demanding South Korea to pay more for maintaining troops on peninsula. They also say U.S. has caused a great deal of damage to the South Koreans. This is to show the newspapers in North Korea. They use the headline. They create the news to portray the U.S. as the citizen's common enemy. More example here. There's one time North Korea launched a ballistic missile test from the submarines. Let's see what the state run media say. They say the test was a very great success under the supervision of Kim Jong-un, the current leader of North Korea. And this successful launch was a great step up for them, for their military advancements. However, the truth is, the missile only flew for 18 miles after the launching, so it is considered a failure. But this is how they use media to to tell to show you to tell their North Korean citizens what to think about their own countries, what to what to think about their own country is great. There's no failure. The economic hardship famines are not reported in their media. They only focus on the informing the technology advancement and the greatness of the kings to the countries. So next, I'll pass on to Kang to furthermore explain the agenda settings in other fields. So, as my groupmate mentioned, that the government have controlled their state-run media, which is the radio, TV sets, and the newspaper. But instead of the state-run media, they do control under them, over the education and the polit politic aspect in North Korea. In the education aspect, the students were brainwashed since they were a kid. They were taught in different point of view where the Korean War was started and ended. The truth is, the war is actually started by North Korea and they did not success because Korea is now in still two regions till today. They also portrays that America is aggressive and they are, is their own, is their common enemy. They portrays that America and South Korea is the one who bullied North Korea <coughs> and Kim is the one who protected them from their enemies. They def that Kim protect them from the enemies which they def that Kim defeat American and South Korea. So they were required and educate since they were young to clean Kim portraits every single day with a special cloth to show their devotions towards Kim. And this shows that Kim portrait is like a symbol or a version, North Korea version of hanging up, hanging up a cross. But instead of education, they do control over the politics where the government make the citizen passionate and create loyalty towards the government. The citizen has to be 100% loyalty to Kim, 100% believe in Kim, or even 100% follow the rule made by Kim. For example, the citizen are not allowed to listen, listen to music that are not approved by their leaders. If they listen to music that are not approved by their leaders, or even show sign of disloyalty or non-belief in Kim's supposed godliness, they will be arrested, executed, or even sent into a prison camp. So from here, you can see there's a huge impact of agenda setting theory in North Korea. In this advancement of technology, we cannot access to the internet and get tons of information and to prevent the citizen from the information through online, the North Korea actually restrict the citizen to access to their internet. They, the citizen are only allowed to access to 28 websites that are already selected and filtered by the government. Therefore, till nowadays, the citizen are still deeply believe that Kim Il-sung as sole protector, that he defeat American and South Korea. He protected them from their enemies. 
Therefore, the citizen of North Korea have become the shadow of Kim. Every single move of Kim will affect the citizen feelings. For example, when Kim Il-sung died, the entire country was robbed in shadow that they were so sad, so upset about they have lost their protector. Therefore, the conclusion is, the advent of the internet has changed the way people view and their perspective towards the world. Agenda setting theory exists for subconsciously inject certain desired message to the audience through filter and selecting the information or content. That the agenda setting theory is so powerful and strong that can change important information or content to non-important and also make false uh, like fake news into a real, real news. Therefore, agenda setting has agenda setting theory has really big impact towards the media nowadays. That's our presentation. Thank you.